Welcome to another episode of Travel Stories with Marsh, the first travel podcast in the Middle East. If you love the world around you and you love exploring different landscape, cultures, cuisines and cities, then you are in the right place because here every week I'll be talking to an incredible travel enthusiast who will take us on a fascinating journey around the world by sharing their travel stories. So we've talked about adventure, we've talked about nature, we've also talked about ethical, responsible and sustainable travel. I think it's about time we spoke a little bit about luxury travel on this season of the podcast. And my very special guest on this episode is someone who pretty much walks the talk when it comes to luxury. Dipesh Dipala is the co-founder and managing partner of the homegrown communications events and digital agency, The Code, which is quite an international name to reckon with today. Dipesh, of course, travels around the world for business and for pleasure, and he does have some very fascinating stories to tell us on this episode today. Welcome, and thank you for joining me on the episode today. I think it's been A little more than a decade that I last saw you. How have you been? I've been great. I've been great. Um, Working, growing the company that Mm -hmm. you just mentioned, um, traveling extensively in amongst all of the work um, for work as well as for pleasure. Um, But it's been wonderful. And you've just come back. It was a little hard to track you down. (laughs) You've (laughs) been away traveling. Where have you been? So this time around, I was in Spain Mm -hmm. for uh, for a a while. I was on holiday, but I was also working uh, from there for a mm-hmm. period of time. Um, but yes, I was in Spain. I was in based in Barcelona. I was in Madrid. I went down to an incredible wellness destination called Shah Wellness, mm-hmm. which is um, an incredible uh, wellness clinic and spa. Um, so I just really, you know, I'd been working so hard and for so long without a break. So I felt like I really needed to take yeah. the time to do that. Mm. And we all need that once in a while, don't we? Oh, I yes, mean, we do. Yeah, yes, to we go, we, we need that me time. We need to rejuvenate, refresh, come back with fresh ideas. Yes. And uh, no, it's amazing you did that. But what about taking us on a journey today? Where are you taking us? I'm really, really excited. So today I'm mm-hmm. going to take you to Srinagar, Kashmir. Wow. So Kashmir honestly has been uh, a big part of my life for quite a quite a period of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Kashmir was a very, very special moment in time for, for me uh, with some amazing memories, not just because of, of the experiences I had there, but also, um, you know, it really is a hidden gem, mm. you know, and maybe not so hidden, but mm. it's a gem that's so not yet discovered by so many people. Yeah. Um, and I had the fortune to discover it every summer and in a very, very extraordinary way. So with, uh, with the connections and the, and the, and the people that I knew in Kashmir, I was able to see it in a way that really, I don't think very many people are able to see it. That's such a blessing. Yeah, it really yeah. is. And I was very fortunate. So, um, we were able to, you know, travel to places like Pahalgam and Dachigam and wow. Gulmarg, but stay in in lodges, you know, which had which are restricted, so uh, which can only be, um, you know, inhabited or frequented mm-hmm. by, you know, the kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers. So it, the very very special secret places which uh, which aren't accessible, um, invariably in the most beautiful, extraordinary locations and um it's not to say that that's the only way you should do kashmir because Mm. that that's just that's just one of the elements of kashmir it really is a magical place it's so beautiful and and you know the the air that you breathe the 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 fruits i mean i mean just that to me is a luxury to Mm. have food that actually tastes like Food real fruit that taste yeah. like and fruits yeah. like yeah. there were strawberries which were you felt like you were just you know eating perfume it mm-hmm. was just so so beautiful you know it's so special mm-hmm. which you know unfortunately living in cities and you know we don't really have access to that sort of True. thing and we do but it's very limited yeah. yeah so it was that was a real joy um it's one been one of honestly one of the greatest memories for me 
But of course, you know, you experienced Kashmir very differently. Yeah. Not very many people would be able to experience it yeah. like that. But what would you say if anyone wants to go to Kashmir? What is the high point for you apart from these other experiences mm. why should people go to Kashmir and I'm so glad you said Kashmir because nobody on the podcast has mentioned Kashmir as a place to go to actually I mean I think it would be, be it would be the place that I would recommend number one to anyone mm -hmm. um to answer your question you know there's a lot of things that you can do which you don't have to have special access to mm -hmm. I mean one of the jewels of Srinagar is the Dal Lake mm. it's extraordinarily beautiful and you know with the houseboats and with, with all of the activity that happens on the lake itself I think one of the most special memories for me was um, you know going on a shikara being rowed on a shikara in the very early morning at sunrise when everything is quiet the sun is just glistening on the water you can barely hear anything except just for the ripple of the oar oh going through God. the water I mean it was magic Magical. and you felt like you were in a place like nowhere else you yeah. know you felt like you were on heaven in heaven on earth mm. and I did the very same thing at sunset actually and again it was magical in a very different way but still the same it was just peaceful and quiet and you felt like there was no one else but you on that whole lake and in that whole world and and you know it's really very special yeah so there's that yeah the food is incredible. I'm literally going on a journey with you. The I mean, I'm just food. imagining. Oh my God, <laughs> the food, yeah. The food is incredible. I mean, with are you someone who would travel for food? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, on the whole, I'm a very healthy person. I mm. eat very well. I yeah. eat very clean. Mm. But of course, you know, we all have to treat ourselves. Yeah. Good food and is good food. Good food is good, is good food. food. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I would travel for food. Mm -hmm. Kashmir has really incredible food, you know, um, and it's um, uh, very special. Again, not many people would have you know, probably tried Kashmiri yeah. food, but yeah. um, it is absolutely the most delicious. And of course, the ingredients, mm. you know, the ingredients you have there are so pure and fresh mm. and unadulterated that mm. everything tastes so much better. Yeah. You yes. know, it's, it's just good produce yes. everywhere. Absolutely. But also because of the history, a lot of people would be intimidated to kind of go there. That's true. Do you think people need to be intimidated to go to Kashmir? You know, um, it's interesting you asked that question. And of course, it's very important. Mm. Throughout the years when we were going, um, you know, there were the good times and the bad mm. times. During the good times, it was much easier and you saw, you know, a lot more uh, tourism and mm. you had many people coming from, you know, mostly from India. Mm. Um, but it was quite free. You had to be a little bit careful, yeah. but, you know, it was not uh, too problematic. There were times when, you know, things were not so good. So we were there even in, during those times. But, be, you know, I don't recommend um, visiting when there are tensions, right. you know, and obviously this is something like that you can research. Like with any place, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But currently, you know, um, it's it's fine. You know, there's lots of tourists there. I mean, you know, I, I often see European-American backpackers even. Mm. Um, in fact, I had a close friend who just went there for a wedding, a Saudi wedding in Kashmir, which was wow. very interesting. So, you know, currently it's a good time. Yeah. Um, but always, you know, do your research and check that mm. things are good sure. as with anywhere yeah, in the world. Yeah, yeah. So Kashmir is that magical place for you. That was a really, really beautiful journey. Thank you. So, but you know, growing up, yeah. you were traveling, but is was there a place that kind of made you realize that you actually like travel? Yes. Did anything happen or was it a place? Yes, it was a place. Mm -hmm. There were two places actually, um, Kenya and Tanzania. Mm. So those two places, and I visited many, many years ago as a child mm. and, well, not I wasn't too young, but I was in my teens. And I have to say that um, those two countries left me with something that have, has never left me. Um, it was... It touched me in a way that I think I've never been touched by any place. Wow, really? It was absolutely extraordinary. I mean, Kenya and Tanzania left me spellbound. Um, you know, the, Were they both similar? Well, similar, but quite different in many ways. You okay. know, Kenya at that time was a lot more developed. Um, Tanzania was still quite raw. Mm. So, you know, um, in, in, in Kenya, we experienced... Kenya in a very luxurious way because, mm. you know, it was available and, um, you know, 
it was it was um accessed you know by other you know mm -hmm. people in general yeah. tanzania not so much it was quite raw still um and in those days and you know there were not and it, there was nothing fancy there were no fancy restaurants there was you know no fancy hotels nothing of that sort but it was just the raw beauty of tanzania left me agog and i have to say there was one moment in particular mm -hmm. that to this day gives me goosebumps and i'll never forget it so we went to we drove to the ngorongoro crater mm -hmm. and you know in those days there was only one lodge that you could stay in it was definitely not the most um, comfortable of places mm -hmm. but you know it was the only place we could stay so we checked in we had dinner we went to bed and i remember waking because i wake up very early and i remember waking up very early and I went to the window and I drew the curtains and it was like a, a, a lightning bolt went through me. I, I felt a feeling like I've never felt in my life. It was just, I felt that I was the only person that existed on earth. Wow. It was me and this enormous expanse of the Ngorongoro crater, which was just spectacular. And it was, it's, it's a crater, yeah. um, uh, you know, from, a, yeah. from many, many hundreds of years ago, oh, yeah. um, which is now, of course, you know, heavily, there's a lot of vegetation, there's animal life, there's, you know, all flora, fauna, all of that, but it's, it's, the magnitude of it. I mean, it's immense, you know, and you can never really understand how immense it is until you're standing on the edge of it mm. and looking down. And it just left me with this feeling of, wow, we are just nothing, nothing. in this, uh, on this earth. We so really true. are nothing on yeah. this earth. This is, this is what it's all about. Yeah. And so of course, uh, we got ready, we got dressed and then we went down into the crater to, to discover the animals and discover all of, which again was still very, very raw. Mm. So that really was quite extraordinary. Mm. I think that's a moment that will never leave me. It also kind of humbled you in many ways. Very much right. so. Very and that is so, so important for us. Like we, we travel the world, but sometimes we forget that grounding that we need and yeah. nature does that in so many spectacular ways i think nature is the biggest reminder that mm -hmm. we are just a very small piece of Absolutely. this you know huge universe yeah yeah now yes kenya and tanzania bring those really happy memories for yeah. you but which is that all-time favorite destination of yours and why so that again is a very easy answer for me mm -hmm. because and i'll tell you the reason why before i tell you where Every, and I have been going to this place ever since I was a child. Mm -hmm. um, I continue to go there even now. I go very often. Every time I go, the moment when I'm leaving, I have this enormous sense of, wow, that was absolutely magical. And no matter where I've been in this country, and that country is India, it honestly leaves me spellbound every time. And I'm not just saying that, you know, for the frivolity of it, but it is genuinely what I feel. I mean, every time I go there with, you know, all of its, you know, beauty and it's, you know, the positivity and the negativity and whatever you might have, mm. um, it leaves me spellbound. Every time I leave, I, I leave with a, with a feeling that of, wow, that was absolutely magical. I always meet the most incredible people, mm. um, have, incredible experiences mm. um to this day mm. you know and i've I been agree. going there my entire life yeah. so i have to say that the standout country has to be india and it's so diverse yeah. you know that the yeah. the beauty of india is that it's so diverse yeah. i mean yeah. you can go to india all of your life mm. and see something new every time and, and you feel enough. like you're in another country yeah. depending on which state you're in yeah so it's really extraordinary yeah it is no and it's something so beautiful you said that with all the positivity and the negativity and even the ugliness around yeah. and the beauty around, yeah. it's just the whole diversity of it all is yeah. so, so fascinating. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just never enough. And you know, it, enough. I think with India, it's a love or hate or somewhere in between, you know, yeah. people, um, yeah, you need to keep going there to kind of really experience that it in totality absolutely yeah. because you know your one trip is never going to give you a full aspect mm. of india india you know at yeah. all yeah. it's so diverse yeah. and there's so much more to it you don't even speak the same language no. from area to area so absolutely. it's so very diverse correct so oh my god that's amazing india yeah. but you know what about um 
some experiences that have not sort of left a bad, uh, good taste in your mouth. Yeah. Like, you know, things happen. It doesn't have to be a place. It can be a place also. Yeah. But has is there anything that you recall mm. and you don't remember it very fondly, if it's a place or an incident, anything in your travel experience? Yes, of course, you know, because obviously when you travel a lot, you have good and bad experiences. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think for me... Um, as beautiful and as interesting as it is, you know, Morocco, which is a stunning place. And mm -hmm. I really had, you know, some incredible experiences there. I mm -hmm. saw some amazing places and it was really quite stunning. Um, but I did just found it a very intense place. So okay. Marrakesh, I went to Marrakesh and I, I found it extremely intense. I did not necessarily feel the most comfortable there, even though, I mean, I was spellbound by how, mm. you know, beautiful it is. And, you know, I did have some amazing, um, I visited some beautiful places and, you know, amazing hotels and, um, but I just, it was just quite intense for me, you know, and I, I don't. I, what do you mean when you say it was intense for you? I think the, you know, I think the, the people, um, you know, I, it, it was quite aggressive, you know, like in terms of, um, when I'd go to the markets or when I'd be walking in the streets or, you know, I felt, I, I did not feel comfortable. extremely comfortable. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you, if you go back there, you would kind of think again. Yeah. Yeah. So, Although it, well, I mean, I, but I must say though, it is a beautiful place, mm -hmm. and I, I did have some amazing experiences yeah. there. But yeah, yeah it's but it's, um, it's always about you know who you go with or the experiences you have, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you will not go back. But also, yeah. it's something good because you know now what to expect when right. you go back right. the next exactly. time. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So you know, of course, you spoke about Morocco, you spoke about India, but do you have a hidden gem? Yes. I have a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a country, mm -hmm. but there's there's another, it's a hidden gem of an experience of food, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which uh, it was really special, very, very special. And um, so, you know, in um, in Provence, there's a little, little village called La Molle. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went to a little restaurant called Auberge de La Molle. And we didn't really know. We were just told that it was interesting that we should try it. And um, I took my family and we went, we drove in the evening for dinner and we got to La Molle and we kept driving and it's a small little t a village and we kept driving and we, we weren't really able to find it. And in fact, it turned out that we kept driving past it because it's in, it's actually set in an old petrol station. Oh. Um, so, which was quite interesting yeah. and, and sweet. Um, so we arrive and we sit down and we honestly proceeded to have one of the most incredible dining experiences. Amazing. Um, oh, was it, it French food? It's French food, yeah. but French food. So you have the, you have the elegance of the French food, but it was much more, um, homely. So mm. it was all presented in a much more homely way. Mm. Um, everything was, you know, you would serve yourself as much as you wanted. So for example, the chocolate mousse at the end for dessert came in a huge bowl and you would take as much as you wanted. So not quite the French way. No, not at all. <laughs> but the food itself it was, was divine. absolutely divine. I mean, and of course you had to roll out of there because the amount, it was copious amounts of food mm -hmm. and everything was exquisite from the cheese platter to the chocolate mousse to the you know the the the, the starters the main courses and the food oh just kept God. coming and it was absolutely extraordinary and it was just so charming mm -hmm. and beautiful but what was interesting was that you know at first you you know you weren't really aware because you're sitting there and you're with your family and you're enjoying the food and the and the place and the ambiance mm -hmm. And then you look to your right and you see Joan Collins sitting there with her husband and having no dinner. Way. You look to your left and you see, you know, X person. And so it was absolutely filled. I mean, it's not very big, but mm. it was filled with very, very, you know, well-known people. So it's truly people. a hidden gem. It's a real hidden gem, mm. yes. And and it's exquisite. And it's such a lovely experience. Mm -hmm. And it's so pretty. I mean, Provence is just so beautiful yeah, anyway. Yeah. So. so is it like, uh, do you drive do you drive from Nice or you were just... From Saint-Tropez. So we were... Oh, we from were Saint -Tropez. Saint -Tropez, okay. and then we drove from there yes okay so definitely highly recommend the place highly recommend it. amazing <laughs> now you did say that you would travel for food yes if you could travel around the world yes. in a day yes where do you think you would have breakfast lunch and dinner oh wow so um breakfast 
100% at Albergo mm -hmm. Hotel in Beirut mm -hmm. because it's exquisite. Mm -hmm. um, lunch, I would do at, um, uh, uh, there's a beautiful um, town in the south of France called Saint-Paul-de-Vence. Mm -hmm. And there's La Colombe d'Or, which is an incredible Michelin star restaurant. The food is just exquisite and you're surrounded by artworks of, you know, Picasso. And I don't know, it's just the most beautiful setting and mm -hmm. the food is beyond. Um, so that's where I would do lunch. Mm -hmm. And dinner, I would do at a really charming, beautiful restaurant under the olive groves of a restaurant called Olivo in a beautiful little village in the mountains of Mallorca called Dea. And it's just the most magical, beautiful place to sit and have uh, this incredible dinner. Yeah. Wow. Sounds really fascinating. But, you know... We live in Dubai. Yes. And we are spoiled for choice. Yes. Um, you can have all those meals here as well. Yes. And you've been here very, very long. Yes. So if you had to uh, go for breakfast, lunch and dinner here in Dubai, which mm. are your favorite places to go to? So breakfast at Sand Beach on the Palm, mm -hmm. it's beyond. It's mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. I highly recommend trying that. Uh, for lunch, because I just... I'm obsessed with Lebanese food. I mean, mm -hmm. I eat it almost every mm -hmm. day. Um, the new Babel restaurant from Beirut has opened in uh, Dubai mm -hmm. and it's the food is just incredible. Mm -hmm. So certainly lunch there. And dinner, I would say probably at uh, a restaurant, well, the Italian restaurant again, which has amazing food on the palm again. It's called Loren. Mm, I've been there. And I, I love the place. Mm. I love the food. I just love the atmosphere. And I, yeah, and it's, 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 it's an easy place. It's, I was yeah. just going to say it's very easy. It's yeah. very easy, yeah. but it's exquisite, yeah, you know, so, so, um, yeah, I think that's So probably, you pretty much love the Mediterranean diet. I do. Yeah. I do. I mean, yeah. it's definitely the healthier one. <laughs> it is. It is. No, for sure. Although I do love French. I love everything. I love, yeah. I love all food, Thai yeah. food, French food, you know, you name yeah. it. But I think we're all at, an, uh, you know, at the times are such that we all look for that healthy element in food yeah. and, you know, good food can be healthy as well. Yeah. So yeah, coming back to Dubai again and yeah. the UAE, which yeah. is that one experience you would highly recommend that people should do when they visit you know, I personally am obsessed with horses. Mm. I love horses. I have all my life. I've ridden all my life. And for me, honestly, one of the magical things that I do here, mostly only in the winters because of the weather, mm. is to ride in the desert. Um, oh. It's, you know, there's there's no way to describe it. Mm -hmm. It's a sun, sunrise rise in the desert. So we uh, yeah, a ride in the desert. So... I'll drive, you know, all the way out to near the Babel Shams Hotel um, and uh, in Al-Qudra and get there for just before sunrise, get ready, tacked up and off we go and enjoy the beautiful sunrise and just gallop through the sand. It's one of the most magical things you can do here. It really is. At sunrise. Well, you, I mean, at any time, but for me but personally. But for you, it is probably because you've been riding, like you said, for a but while. But I, but I think you don't have to be a proficient rider. No? You don't have to be a proficient rider to do that because mm -hmm. you have you have uh, a guide that will go with you mm -hmm. and you have horses of all, you know, uh, levels. And, you know, there are children who do it and, you know, there, there are visitors who do it. It's It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to be able to ride. Okay. Um, you know, you can you can just trek through the desert mm -hmm. through the sand it's just it's just so beautiful to experience that you know and actually you see such interesting wildlife actually when i'm when you're when but you're do you riding. go very far into the desert then not too far but it depends on how it depends i mean mm. you know if you're if you're not a proficient rider mm. then you will have a track that they will take you on and the ride will last an hour even that is very beautiful it's beautiful yeah. because you're not only are you enjoying you know, riding through the desert on this incredible animal, but mm. you're also seeing other animals. So, you mm. know, you're seeing Arabian oryx, you're seeing, you know, other mm. uh, wildlife, you know. In their natural habitat. In their natural habitat. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's very interesting and uh, definitely a must do. Interesting. I mean, I'd really, really looking forward to doing that. I haven't done that myself. You so should yeah, do it. yeah, it's very, very it. interesting. Yeah. So, what's next uh, in travel for you? What are you looking forward to? So, you know, um, I have a bucket list, of mm -hmm. course, as everyone does. Mm -hmm. And 
certainly Bhutan is going to be the place where I want to go to next mm -hmm. in terms of my travel bucket yeah. list. So that's that's the next one that you want to get. That's the next one. Yeah. Bhutan is lovely. It's, it's I don't know why it, it what the draw is for me. I mean, obviously from everything I've seen and I've read, beautiful. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. And it's a place I feel like I want to discover on my own yeah. as opposed to mm. go with people, mm. you know. Mm. So it's certainly something that I'm going to yeah. going to do. And I really love the fact that they actually try and maintain the the sanctity of that place. Yes. They they screen uh, the number of people that visit every yeah. year. They don't let um, a certain a number of tourists they only allow a certain number of tourists to go into that country Correct. every year yeah. which is so amazing i mean not i mean most countries would like one more tourists in for the commercial purposes etc but bhutan is still maintaining that and i think that's very commendable yeah yeah, yeah it's amazing well thank you so much My i pleasure. really hope you get to go to bhutan i'm gonna make it happen and yes <laughs> you will you will i'm sure and i hope you have some amazing adventures thank on your you. own a place that you'll probably discover another side of yourself. I'll come back and tell you all about it, Mashmi. Yes, I will be waiting. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let us know what you thought of today's episode. Until the next time, safe travels and keep exploring. Thank <laughs> you.